Hello Tech World, this is Tech Thoughts. In this short video, we'll be discussing how to create a nano server image. And once we've got that image set up and finalized, we'll go ahead and attach it to a Hyper-V VM, get that spun up, and just cover some really basic initial steps for firing up a nano server for the first time. As always, if you prefer written documentation, you can find the corresponding article for this video on the techthoughts.info blog, which contains a lot more detail surrounding nano server image creation. So go ahead and check it out in the description below. Let's go ahead and get started. There's really only two things that you're going to need to fire up your first nano server image. The first is going to be the Windows Server 2016 media installation. So you can get this direct from Microsoft by downloading the evaluation copy, or if you have access to an MSDN subscription, you can go ahead and download the Windows Server 2016 ISO. And once you have that, you can go ahead and mount it. And you'll see that there's a actual nano server folder in here that contains all of the nano server packages as well as the nano server image generator, which contains all the necessary scripts and modules that you need in order to get your first nano server image created. So essentially all you need to do is copy that nano server image to a location of your choice, or you can use the tool to just direct link to this actual mounted media installation. I've gone ahead and copied that nano server folder onto my desktop. And at this point, all I would have to do is come into the nano server image generator, import these modules, and that would give me access to the new nano server image commandlet. And what you see over here on the left is everything that you would need in order to actually create your first nano server image. You can see by leveraging this commandlet that I've gone ahead and indicated all the necessary parameters to successfully create an image, including the deployment type, which is going to make this a guess, which means that this nano image is going to be a VM. The addition is going to be data center. The media path, as you can see, is showing me where those actual nano server image files are. The target path and where I want to actually create my VHDX, the maximum size of my VHDX, the name of the actual nano server itself. And you can see here that I've added the failover clustering feature, as well as the shielded VM package and the Windows Defender. I've gone ahead and enabled WinRM and set the initial administrator password. And if I were to highlight this code and play it, it would create a VHDX image for me as long as I have the second prerequisite, which is the Windows 10 ADK. If you're building your nano server images on a server 2016 or a Windows 10 device, they natively have the Windows 10 ADK and you're good to go if you're using one of those operating systems. As you can see here, I'm leveraging a Windows 2012 R2 device, but I've gone ahead and downloaded and installed the Windows 10 ADK, which is going to allow me to create nano images on this server 2012 R2 installation. So with the right ADK and the new nano server image commandlet in your nano server media files that you've retrieved off of the Windows Server 2016 ISO, you're all set to go ahead and make your first nano server image. That being said, the new nano server image commandlet has a ton of customization options and have a lot of difficult to memorize syntax that ensures that you successfully create a nano server image. Microsoft has recognized this and has released the nano server image builder which is basically just a GUI overlay that helps you or assists you in creating the new nano server image commandlet. So we'll go ahead and run through this wizard real quick. And you'll see at the end that all it's really going to achieve for us is actually creating this new nano server image commandlet with all of the desired parameter options in the right syntax. Let's go ahead and kick this off. We're going to be creating a new nano server image. So I'm going to click that. It's going to give me a quick overview, letting me know that there's a lot of things I can specify ahead of time when creating this nano server image. I can inject IP information, gateway, DNS, things of that nature. So I need to know my network configuration prior to rolling into this. If I want those parameters to be identified inside of the image. I need to have access to those nano server files that we got off of the Windows Server 2016 ISO. We need to know the name of the target server, in all of our drivers, if we're going to be loading this image onto a physical device, I'm going to go ahead and click next. So the first question it's going to ask us is the location of those nano server files that you got off your Windows Server 2016 ISO. I'm going to go ahead and browse and I have those located on my desktop under the nano server. You need to make sure that you select the parent folder that contains the nano server folder as if you click the actual nano server folder itself, you'll see that you'll get an error. So I'm gonna click that parent folder and it will identify that that nano server folder that we copied off the ISO is located as a subfolder within that. I'll go ahead and click next. Go ahead and agree to the license terms and click next. 
Now, this is a very important decision that you have to make here between are you creating this as a guest image uh, for a VM or are you going to be loading this onto a physical chassis? For this demonstration, we're going to be loading it into a Hyper-V VM. So the appropriate one here for me is virtual machine image. I'm going to go ahead and specify the output file for that now. I'm going to go ahead and give this image name as image1. And another important distinction here is VHD or VHDX. It's not specifically stating here that you're choosing between a Gen 1 or a Gen 2 VM, but that's essentially what you're doing by locking in a VHD or VHDX format. If I want a Gen 1 nano device, I'm going to be selecting VHD, and if I want a Gen 2 nano device, I'm going to be selecting VHDX. Since I want Gen 2, I'll select VHDX and click Save. This will output that to location, and you'll see here that the image creation logs will also go to that same place. So if you want those to go to a different location, go ahead and specify that here. You can also set the max size of your VHD or VHDX. I'm going to take the default of 8 gigs and click Next. Again, it's reminding us to have that information that we're going to need here in a moment. Go ahead and click Next. The first thing it's going to ask you is to specify the server edition. And you get the option between data center or standard. I'm going to go ahead and take data center. And you can begin selecting optional packages. The packages are going to serve as the roles and features, which is going to set the capabilities of this nano device that you're creating. I'm going to be creating a file server that has the failover clustering service. I'm going to include the Windows Server anti-malware. And that's all I'm going to take for this initial demonstration. So based on the options that I've selected here, I'm essentially going to have a highly available file server that has the default Windows Server anti-malware. And I'm going to go ahead and click Next. This is the screen where you can add additional drivers for your environment. As this is going into a VM on a Hyper-V device, I'm not going to require the addition of any drivers at this time. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. All right, let's specify a computer name. I'm going to type in nanotest and give it a administrator password to start with. Time zone is going to be central for me. And let's take a moment to talk about this domain join screen. So nano server is not capable of joining a domain in the traditional sense. It is capable of being part of domain through a form of offline domain join. So if you're running this nano server image builder on a device that is joined to a domain that you want this nano server to be a part of, you can click this join domain button, specify the domain name. And if you're also running the nano server image builder as a domain admin, as long as you have an AD object that has a corresponding device name that hasn't been used before, that's a key point, that AD object cannot have been used before, then the nano server image builder will go ahead and create the necessary domain job blob file for you and inject it into the image so that when it starts up, it will be capable of joining, quote unquote, your domain. Since I'm not running on a device that's joined to a domain currently, I'm, this feature is not going to be available to me I would have to manually create a domain blob file. I cover this in great detail on the techthoughts.info write-up, so make sure to check out that link if you have questions about how to get your nano server joined into your domain. For now, I'm not going to engage any of these options, and I'm going to go ahead and click Next. I highly recommend that you enable WinRM, as that's one of the primary ways that you can manage a nano server once it comes online. Remember, nano doesn't have console access or the ability to remote desktop, so you can engage it through Server Manager, but if you're trying to do something a little bit more advanced than the options that are available to you through Server Manager, then WinRM is your best bet for interacting with your new nano server. I'm not going to specify any network settings here at this time. The nano console, once we get into it, is very limited, but one of the things that it does allow you to do is set the IP information, and I'm going to go ahead and set it in the console rather than specifying it in the image itself. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Unless you have the need for advanced settings, you can go ahead and create your basic nano server image now. But one recommendation I have for you is to go ahead and inject any offline updates that are available for nano server at this time by clicking the continue to configure advanced settings. The first thing it's going to give you an option for is adding servicing packages. So there have been several updates released for nano server, and I cover how to get access to those updates on the techthoughts.info blog. I've gone ahead and downloaded those nano updates here, and I can specify those cab files here, and they'll be included inside of my nano image so that I don't have to pull those down through Windows updates once my nano server is online. 
With those added, I'll go ahead and click next. The setup complete.command file allows you to run post customization tasks on your nano server. I'll be covering this in greater detail in a later video. But if you have custom steps that you want to run after your nano server starts, you would specify that here in the setup complete.command file. If your environment leverages emergency management services, you can go ahead and specify the necessary information here on this screen. And if you have custom development scenarios or want additional debugging capabilities, you can also engage that in the advanced configuration options. On the confirmation screen, you can go ahead and review all of your settings. And if you're satisfied, go ahead and click Create. Now the Nano Server Image Builder tool has actually kicked off and has begun actually mounting and creating the image for us. And if we look at disk management, we can see that it's actually mounting that VHDX that we're creating. And we'll see that drive pop in and out from disk management as the Nano Server Image Builder continues with the build process. While that continues, I want to draw your attention down here to this box toward the bottom of the tool. And you can see that, as I indicated at the beginning of the video, all the Nano Server Image Builder has really accomplished is taken those GUI options that we specified and made sure that it created the correctly formatted new Nano Server Image commandlet with all the desired parameters. As the build process progresses, we can see that it's injecting the Nano Server Image Update CAB files that I specified earlier. All right, with that job completed, we should now have a completed VHDX in this location that we specified with the name that we gave it. We can see here that I do indeed have a image one VHDX and that has grown considerably in size because I injected the available Windows updates for nano server into that image. All right, so armed with that new VHDX, I can copy that over to my Hyper-V machine and create a new VM. I'll go ahead and call this new nano. Since we made a VHDX, this is going to be a gen two VM. I'll go ahead and give it 1,024 megabytes of RAM. Instead of creating a virtual hard disk, I'll go ahead and use an existing virtual hard disk since we have that nano image. And finish. All right, let's go ahead and connect to this new nano device and start it up for the first time. All right, so we're sitting at the standard nano login screen and we should have an administrator account with the password that we specified in the original image creation. Okay, so as Microsoft has discussed on numerous occasions, nano server is expected to be managed remotely and the console access has very limited feature set. You can see here that we only have four options. We can specify some basic networking. We can adjust the inbound and outbound firewall rules. We can also configure WinRM for management. Since I didn't specify networking in my original image, I'll go ahead and set that up now by highlighting the networking option, clicking enter, and it identifies the adapter that I have available. I'll click enter. And we can see here that I currently have a DHCP address and by clicking F11, I can set the IPv4 settings statically. By clicking F11, I can go ahead and toggle with F4, the DHCP option, and this gives me the ability to set a static IP for whatever is appropriate for my network. I hope you found this video on nano server image creation very useful. And don't forget to check for additional details on this topic on the techthoughts.info blog.